His Royal Highness, His Royal Highness passed away. 아, 안녕하세요. 매일매일 운동하기를 실천하고 있는 동타 왕코입니다. 아, 제 화분이 죽어가고 있어요. 아, 물을, 아, 그게 진짜 식물도 키우기 너무 어렵네요. 선물 받은 마지막 생명체인데, 처음이자 마지막 생명체인데, 죽어가고 있습니다. 자, 오늘은 금요일. 불금이죠, 불금. 날씨 너무 좋아요. 하지만 전 오늘도 이렇게 집에 있습니다. 아, 내일 야간 출근이에요. 아, 맞다. 마켓 컬리 살. 9시까지 주문인가? 11시까지 주문인가? 모르겠습니다. 모르겠어. 그냥, 씨. 점심에 짜장면 먹지, 뭐. 어? 필립 왕자가 죽었답니다. 아, 나이 엄청 많았죠. 왕자가 아니가? 프린스. 네, 어. 오. 99세까지 살았네요. 엄청 멋지게 오래 살았네. 저 운동하겠습니다. 저는 과연 몇 살까지 살수 있을까요? 80살은 넘길 수 있을까요? 교대 근무를 20년 넘게 할 거라서 80살까지는 솔직히 좀못살것 같고. Of course, the Queen was up front. She was the head of state. She made the final decisions. But he was her key advisor, her confidant, and behind the scenes as well. He was patriarch, very much patriarch of the family, making a lot of the key family decisions. Tales <sighs> <sighs> coming into light about how the kingdom will observe his passing over the next several days. We'll have to wait and see. Um, there is a plan in place, both uh, within a pandemic and the lockdown, one version there and another version if we were out of lockdown. We're still currently in lockdown, even if the restrictions are loosening somewhat. Uh, but the plans are never official until the Queen has signed them off. So she will be looking at that currently. I know that Prince Philip was intimately involved in his own funeral plans, frankly. He wanted certain... Um, Certain things reflected his military achievements and also his work with the WWF, the conservation work, for example. That was all reflected there, but they can't have the processions through London. They can't have floral memorials because they don't want to encourage crowds. So what I think will happen, what I assume will happen at this point, is the body will be kept at Windsor Castle. Staff and family will be able to pay their respects over the next few days. And then they'll try to come up with some, with some sort of COVID um ready plan really for a funeral which will take place at Windsor Castle it has been an extraordinary life they were married for more than seven decades but have been destined for each other since childhood according to one of Queen Elizabeth's bridesmaids I think she fell in love when she was 13 I mean God you must go joking you know it's a, it's a sort of Viking god <laughs> she's never looked at anybody else ever and I think he very truly has been um, a, a rock. The couple married in Westminster Abbey on November the 20th, 1947. For the rest of his life, Prince Philip was a near constant presence at the Queen's side. He gave a rare insight into life behind palace walls when celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. I think that the main lesson that we've learned is that tolerance is the one essential ingredient of any happy marriage. It may not be quite so important when things are going well, but it is absolutely vital when things get difficult. And uh, you can take it from me that the Queen has the quality of tolerance and abundance. <laughs> if this companionship came at a professional cost, it was one Prince Philip was prepared to pay. Just to have been there all the time behind her 
and Radiator sacrificed his life. He did it too, sacrificed his life, because I think he would have loved to have gone on the Navy and really made a career out of that. Um, so he, he, he sacrificed too. And so um, I think it's made for a wonderfully solid marriage. The Queen and Lieutenant Mountbatten met before the Second World War when he was a young naval cadet. His number one job from the word go has been to, quote, support the Queen. Everything he does is in support of the Queen. Uh, it's just been one of the, the great royal romances, I think, of history. Uh, people talk about Victoria and Albert as a phrase. It was trips off the tongue, and I have no doubt that in years to come, people will talk about Elizabeth and Philip in exactly the same way. Famous for his energy, the Duke's health inevitably deteriorated as he headed into old age. The royal family Christmas was disrupted in 2011 when Philip had to be taken to hospital for minor heart surgery. Five months later, during the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations, Philip had to go to hospital again, this time with a bladder infection. Family came and went, and within days, Philip was well enough to return home, but not to return immediately to his public duties. In the spring of 2017, Prince Philip effectively announced his retirement, saying he would give up official royal duties. A year and a half later, he was involved in a car crash, raising questions about whether he should be driving at the age of 97. Then, public appearances were reserved for special occasions, such as Lady Gabriella Windsor's wedding in May 2019. Prince Philip had been patron or president of some 800 charities, including the WWF. He was a renowned environmental campaigner. He also had his own royal heritage, being born into the Greek and Danish royal families. But he renounced those titles when he took British citizenship in 1947. So, what of his role in the British monarchy? I think a pivotal, pivotal point of the, because he was the head of the, of the, uh, the family. He was, in, it's his responsibility as a father to be that, and he does that extremely well. Would it have been difficult for him always in public to take, be taking a back seat to his wife? I would have thought that anybody who has that uh, responsibility will find it, uh, uh, I would say, taxing but you when you have uh, this whole concept in your blood and you are, keep your sense of humor and your sense of dignity then you carry it out beautifully and one thing prince philip certainly had was a sense of humor and a tendency to make gaffes <sighs> on a trip to australia in 2002 he asked an aboriginal leader do you still throw spears at each other and when meeting the Obamas in 2009, a reference to world leaders. <laughs> Prince Philip, serviceman, campaigner, great-grandfather, and a beloved husband. CNN's Anna Stewart is live outside of Buckingham Palace for us at this hour, where uh, I would imagine people are starting to make their way to Buckingham Palace, as, as you know, people often do, as a way of paying their respects. What are you seeing there this morning? Or actually, I should say this afternoon in London. We are... <sighs> Yeah, we are already beginning to see some people coming out to Buckingham Palace to see what's going on. Uh, the news, of course, only came out really within the last hour. You can see the flag is flying at half-mast over Buckingham Palace, and this is a nation going into mourning now. This is a man, Prince Philip, who served his country for 65 years. He will be remembered for a fantastic legacy of public work, official duties. He uh, attended some 22,000 engagements all by himself. He worked with the Queen. It's been a marriage of 73 years. He leaves behind a nation in mourning. His wife, the Queen, four children, eight grandchildren, and ten great-grandchildren. You can expect the next few days for everyone to remember Prince Philip, his passions for life, his military career, his extraordinary upbringing. There's lots more to come in the story of Prince Philip. Diana Stewart, thank you very much. Stand by for us there. Joining us now, Max Foster, also with the CNN Royal Commentator, Kate Williams. And Kate, you know, 99 years old, Prince Philip, in so many ways, the center uh, or a center of that family, but also a bridge to a different world era. I mean, his brother, the deposed king of Greece, 
<sighs> just a just a different imperial <sighs> era in the entire world. This is a moment in history. It is a moment in history, and Prince Philip, yes, of course, he was born in 1921, had to flee from Greece because the Greek monarchy was under threat, it was deposed, his family was thought to be under threat as well. And Prince Philip, he was born just a few years after World War I, and of course, served in World War II, and he served so bravely in World War II, and so many of those who served in World War II, they are no longer with us. We have lost so many veterans. And the Queen herself also served in World War II. And every time she is with veterans, she feels so sad. And here she is, her, her own beloved husband. She, they wrote to each other throughout World War II. He was devoted on the side of the Allies. They had this wartime correspondence. And as soon as the war was over, they, 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 they got married. He is, it really is the end of an era. It is, the, he, he, Prince Philip was a man who saw nearly all of the 20th century and all the 21st century so far. So everything has changed, technology, the world, travel. He is our longest married, uh, longest serving consort, the longest married, more like 73 years. It is so sad that he's died just a few months short of his 100th birthday. And a man who, above all, devoted service first to the monarchy and to the country and to his causes. You know, Max, um, as Kate just touched on, his, his devotion there to the monarchy, to the queen, his wife, we know they, he was pivotal for her, as you pointed out in your piece, especially when it came to certain decision makings, but he was also a key part of the royal family in terms of the actual family sense. You mentioned the fact that obviously the family would have been notified before word went out to the public of his passing, and Max, I couldn't help but notice you, you said, of course, Harry would have been notified, even though he's in California. There's been much made of the relationship between Harry and his grandparents, especially in the last several weeks. Can you just put into perspective for us how integral Prince Philip was um, in those conversations, in keeping the family together, uh, or trying to bridge the gap there? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned Harry there, because you'll remember that after that Oprah interview, he uh, went out of his way to mention to Oprah afterwards that the, the race comment re regarding his unborn son at the time um, wasn't uh, in reference to the Queen or Philip. So the Queen and Philip are on a on a different level for this family. They are the patriarch, the matriarch of the family. The the Queen is head of state, head of the armed forces. So uh, out front, she uh, is the leader. Behind the scenes, uh, Philip was very much in control. Would make key decisions about where his children would go to school, for example. He would bang heads together. I'm sure. He was involved in conversations behind the scenes about the Sussexes uh, leaving uh, their royal roles, for example. It's interesting, when you, meet, when, you, when you met him, you've got to adjust to this now, haven't you? It's so hard to imagine. As Kate was saying, he was married for more than 70 years. It's extraordinary. And he was in our lives for that period of time. Uh, but he was a very dominant figure. He made his own decisions, and his staff really had no control over him. He would wander through Buckingham Palace doing exactly as he wished. And I think it was very difficult for him to adjust to playing second fiddle to the Queen. And I think they frankly came to a decision very early on that he would lead on big family decisions, lead behind the scenes, while she led out front and in public. And he found his own groove, if you like, his own role, his own purpose. And that's really the sacrifice that he made, but also the contribution to. Okay, talk to me about legacy for the family and for the kingdom. <laughs> There is such a great legacy, and Prince Philip really, he really, uh, he gave him a great legacy of service and all of his charities. I mean, we just think he retired in 2017. I mean, really, it's incredible to think how much he did, how long he was going for. And I think what Prince Philip really has left is a legacy that's very hard to live up to. I mean, he was completely devoted to the monarchy, and it was a surprise to both him and the Queen to, that she came to the throne so early. The, the King George VI, he died very young, you know, he was just in his 50s, it was very young, uh, both the Queen and Prince Philip expected that uh, they would have many more years, that the Queen would come to the throne when she was, say, 40 or so, the Duke mid-40s, and he had to give up so much so early in his naval career, just as Max was saying, it was a difficult thing for such a, you know, such a really a determined, such an alpha male to then have to walk behind the Queen to be the support, but he devoted himself to it absolutely and his legacy I think is one of 
great devotion to the monarchy and also so many of his causes for veterans, <sighs> particularly for the environment, his work for the WWF. I mean, when Prince Philip was talking about the importance of conservation, it really wasn't very fashionable. People didn't really know what it was and he really brought it into the background <sighs> and now it's so important. How oh, important. <laughs> Many people in Britain have done, I did it myself, in which it really was to try and give young people oh. an idea and really is a sense of empowerment and a sense of enthusiasm and what they could do and what they couldn't do. We all went on sort of camping trips, uh, you know, living for ourselves, which was a challenge when I was 15 or 16. But, the, you know, the, the legacy he's left for young people, for conservation and for devotion to the monarchy, he really has been someone who will go down in history as... Get it? You know, there was, there, he was given a role and he took it. And, and although it was difficult at times, there were ups and downs. He was determined to make the best of it. All right, Kate Williams, Max Foster, uh, our thanks to both of you. Again, you're looking at pictures of the late Prince Philip. The news this morning out of Buckingham Palace: Prince Philip dead at the age of 99. Our coverage continues after this. Thank you. Businesses are working together like never before. All new on CNN, Connecting Africa. Join me and Lenny Jokas as we crisscross the continent to show you how new connections are revolutionizing commerce in Africa. This month, Connecting Africa through telecommunications. We're going to have the strongest connectivity business across Africa. All new Saturday on CNN in association with a Frexin Bank. Take the vaccine when it's your turn. Vaccines when it's against a pandemic. If you don't get vaccinated, you have zero protection. But why do people fear that? Misinformation being spread around the neighborhood is taking its toll. It's a beautiful document that's completely full of lies. Join Dr. Sanjay Gupta on a journey to find the answers. Where is the anti-vaccine information coming from? CNN Special Report, The Truth About Vaccines. Sunday on CNN. Businesses are transforming, preparing for a future where innovation will change the way we live and work. It's going to be, and it is, the most significant development in portable techs in 65 years. It is an essential building block in providing a clean and affordable drinking water. Explore the future of business. Go to cnn.com slash business evolved in association with Vodafone Business. Today we live in an unpredictable environment and news races around the world at breakneck speed. My show brings you the latest news and top news makers. One of the challenges I face is how do I reposition our forces to deal with the threats of the coming decades? Any thought about running for president in France faster? We also explore vital issues impacting our lives. What's happening now in the world is a great thing because people are talking about subjects they never did before. I'm on board. Tuesday to Saturday on CNN.
to CNN this hour, Britain's Prince Philip has died. <clears throat> Buckingham Palace released a statement saying the Queen's husband passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. He was 99 years old. The Duke of Edinburgh spent several weeks in hospital earlier this year and was discharged last month. He was married to Queen Elizabeth for 73 years and is the longest serving consort of a reigning British monarch. There you see the live pictures of London where flags are flying at half mast. Prime Minister Boris Johnson paid tribute to the Duke saying he earned the affection of generations in the UK across the Commonwealth and around the world. Like the expert carriage driver that he was, he helped to steer the royal family and the monarchy. So it remains an institution indisputably vital to the balance and happiness of our national life. Well, reactions are pouring in. The Archbishop of Canterbury saying, quote, I join with the rest of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in mourning the loss of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And we'll have more reaction from the region and around the world, indeed, uh, coming up. Let's bring in our correspondents now, our team. Anna Stewart, Max Foster, Sarah Griswood, and CNN Royal commentator Kate Williams. And let's start with you, Anna, at Buckingham Palace. Morning, Becky. Yes, it's a somber mood here at Buckingham Palace. We're starting to see some people coming out to the gates. Uh, I think that some disbelief really that it's actually finally happened. Prince Philip has died aged 99, uh, just two months short of his 100th birthday. And as you said, this comes after many weeks of him being unwell in hospital in London. He was suffering uh, from an infection. He was also treated for uh, a pre-existing heart condition. He had a minor operation. It went well. He returned to Windsor Castle, but sadly he passed away this morning. Now, he leaves behind the most extraordinary legacy. As you said, he is the longest serving consort in British history, married to the Queen for 73 years. 65 years of active service, performing official engagements alongside his wife, very much a partnership uh, throughout that time, and also on his own. He did over 22,000 solo engagements. He was patron of over 600 charitable organizations. This is a man who really touched the lives of millions of people here in the UK and around the world, the Commonwealth, of course, and he'll be remembered very fondly, I think, over the coming days. And we've got so much to talk about, about his legacy and the life that he led. Becky? Max Foster, a quote from Prince Philip himself recently. He said, I try, or I think, to try and create a memorial for yourself while you're alive. It's slightly indecent, I think. I'd rather other people decide what legacy I leave. I'm not trying to create one. And anybody who knew Prince Philip wouldn't be surprised by that sort of comment. But your thoughts, if you will, on his legacy on a day that we have learned that Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and the Queen's husband has passed away at the age of 99. Well, in terms of a memorial oh, for the gosh. Queen has ultimate say on that, she will be <laughs> signing off plans that have been laid out over a period of years and which, frankly, Prince Philip was intimately involved with. And I think it's true to say that he didn't want a huge amount of fuss. I think the Queen would like to give him more fuss. And so now it becomes a question of, do you give Prince Philip what he wanted, a, a lower key uh, funeral or the bigger one that she feels that he deserves? He, he absolutely played an integral role to her monarchy, the longest monarchy in British history. He was her closest advisor and of course her partner. She was very close to her mother, very close to her sister, but she lost them in the 90s. So uh, the, the monarchy loses something here, and that means that 16 countries around the world uh, lose something here. The Queen won't abdicate, I'm sure of that. She has always suggested that she would serve uh, throughout her whole life. But what this does mean is that she doesn't have that support that she had previously. Prince Charles, Prince William will be stepping up even more than they had done before. But I think Prince Philip is someone who, in front of the cameras, did take a couple of steps behind. I think that was probably quite difficult for him, frankly, as a, as a dominant force, a very strong character. But behind the scenes, he was the patriarch of the family. He would make key decisions about anything involving education, for example, or indeed more recent uh, family crises, like the ones where the Sussexes left their royal roles and Prince Andrew as well, getting caught up with Jeffrey Epstein. So these sorts of things, 
Prince Philip would play into in a key way, but we never really saw that. Uh, but I think we'll get a sense of loss, really, in the way that the, the family moves forwards, Becky. Sarah, to quote Queen Elizabeth on Prince Philip, he is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments, but he has quite simply been my strength and stay over these years. And I owe him a greater debt than he would ever claim or we mm. shall ever know, she says, mm. during a speech she... on their golden wedding anniversary back in 1997. Mm. Yes, that's absolutely right. I don't think there's any doubt at all that he really was the wind beneath her wings. I think now, in, in his latter years, we've almost forgotten the man Prince Philip was and the job he did in the first years of his wife's reign, because he really was the modernizer of the royal family, you know, helping to reshape it. And you've been talking about his legacy. I think Prince Philip's legacy really is a royal family a British monarchy equipped to move into the 21st century. I think that's that's his, his lasting tribute, if you like. Kate, he was born Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark on the island of Corfu in Greece in 1921. For those who are less familiar with the life of Prince Philip, who was he? Well, Prince Philip had a very difficult childhood. So Prince Philip, like uh, Queen Elizabeth, is a descendant of Queen Victoria. And his, he, he was part of the Danish royal family that became part of the Greek royal family. But in the early 1920s, there was a lot of insecurity. Uh, the, the Greek monarchy abdicated, came back. And so Prince Philip and his family fled. He was just a baby. He and his sisters and his father and mother all had to flee from Greece. He was in a, put in a little crate by a British Navy vessel. And after that, he had a very difficult childhood. His mother was sent away to a, 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 a mental asylum. She had a very difficult life. His father really was quite absent. So Prince Philip really did bring himself up as a young man and find a lot of, uh, he found a lot of strength and a lot of structure in boarding school at Gordonston, which did move to this country. And where Prince Philip really excelled, someone who'd had a really difficult childhood, apparently once upon a time, someone said to him, what language did you speak at home when you were young? And he said, well, where was home? So he found a real structure in the Navy. He became, when he went to Naval College in Dartmouth, where he met the young Princess Elizabeth, they, he, they jumped over nets together. She found him charming. She was 13, he was 18. He was the top level cadet at the time. He was absolutely top and became, he became one of the youngest first lieutenants. He, he absolutely excelled in the war. And, it's very striking because after the war, Prince Philip was really often criticised anti-German prejudice because of the war, and yet he fought so bravely on the Allied side and saved many, many men from, from German bombs uh, on, on the ships. He was a brave and determined and devoted man in the Navy, and I think that was where he completely excelled. And it was really very difficult for him to give that up when, in 1952, to, to everyone's surprise, it was... It, the king was so young, George VI was so young, he uh, died and the queen became queen and suddenly Prince Philip and his wife were catapulted into this new role that they hadn't expected at that point for not for another 10 or 15 years. And he was a man, you know, we're saying who was he? He was a man of devotion, he was a man of great strength, he was a man who really was at the top of his game and then went to be the consort, a role that isn't always easy, and became the longest serving, a man who only retired in 2017, did so much for charities, did so much for causes, and really, I think, gave so much, just as Sarah was saying, just as Max was saying, so much to this country. Ugh. And for the Commonwealth and Australia's Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, saying, quote, Prince Philip was no stranger to Australia, having visited our country <clears throat> on more than 20 occasions, then going on to say, I always Australia are. to send our love and deepest condolences to Her Majesty and all of the royal family. The Commonwealth family joins together in sorrow and thanksgiving for the loss and life of Prince Philip. God bless from all here in Australia. We're going to take a very short break at this point. Prince Philip. Queen Elizabeth II's husband has died at the age of 99.
anywhere in the world, CNN is there. We've all been detained by the Russian authorities. Uh. Yeah, I think I've seen that. It's easy to spot ambulances like this one racing all over the city going on call after call. It's been 